are back at Epcot again. The uh, video has kind of been coming out slow here lately, but uh, found time to get over to the park. Got the food and wine festival started actually a couple of weeks ago now. So we're going to head in and see what we see as far as the food goes, maybe a couple of drinks. Uh, kind of checked out the menu. The menu sounded like it had a lot of, I don't know, I, don't, I want to say new stuff, but it was kind of kind of strange, maybe not uh, necessarily my favorite stuff, but we'll see what we get into. We've got a Ga Guardian of the Galaxies ride a little later on. Uh, so here we go. First up, the fry basket. We're going to get the uh, fry flight, I think. See how it is. One fry flight. I'm guessing this is probably the uh, sea salt, probably the malt vinegar, and uh, the barbecue deal. We'll see how it is. Okay, so these are the malt vinegar, and sea salt, barbecue, and that's a sweet potato fry that had the, what, what I thought was cheese was not cheese. Actually, turned out to be uh, whipped cream. So that was kind of a weird thing when you're expecting one thing and you get another. But as far as my favorite, I'd have to say these two probably are pretty close to one and one. Barbecue, eh, it's okay. Would I get it again? I suppose if I was hungry enough, I probably would. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> what would be a trip to Food and Wine Festival without a stop at Simmering Sips? Uh, maybe we get like a tropical mimosa or something. Let's see what we end up with here. Uh, let's try the uh, tropical mimosa and the berry sour something or other. So the uh, berry sour here, uh, eh, it's okay, I wouldn't get another one. Mimosa for the win though. So we got the lightning lane. Our uh, callback time for the virtual queue is getting later and later. I don't know if we'll make the other one, but we'll go ahead and do the lightning lane. I'm not going to film the, the whole ride because it's a little hard to hold onto the camera and umbrella and my hat and all that stuff. So anyway, here we go. Well, here we are, getting ready to board. Okay, well, as far as the Food and Wine Festival, or the first try at going to the Food and Wine Festival, that came to a not so abrupt halt. Uh, what ended up happening? We left the um, uh, Guardian of the Galaxies ride. We headed over, um, where'd we go? We were, made our way over to um, kind of like the Canada area. I think we stopped at, I don't know what the name of the booth is. It, it, it's, it's been like the Honey Bistro. It's kind of behind Simmering Sips there. Uh, we got some kind of a frozen drink or something didn't really turn out to be all that good I didn't film that figuring that there was going to be more in the day to, to film went from there to Canada got a plate of steak Again, I didn't film it. I, I kind of wish I had, I had had it was pretty decent. It was the same uh, Steak type setup that was last year or the year before So I didn't film it again figuring that there was going to be more uh, later in the day. It was getting pretty hot it was uh, probably a little hotter than maybe normal. Uh, it was the hottest part of the day, so it was getting kind of tough to get around and, and a little uncomfortable. Uh, but what had ended up happening, um, right across from the Canada booth, uh, along the, what is that, World Showcase Lagoon, there's a couple of shade trees right there, and there's kind of a little garden in between uh, that's fenced off, and there's a path with some tables along that fence railing. We stopped there in the shade and kind of trying to cool off a little bit. I had, I had already eaten my steak and, and was done with all of that and was standing there, just kind of crowd watching, trying to cool off. And all of a sudden, I felt something and kind of turned like I thought maybe somebody threw something on me or something like that. And I looked, I looked up, there's a one of the birds, an ibis, has got that long, goofy looking beak sitting in the tree up above me, probably 10 feet above me. Took a great big old dump, came down my side of my ear, got like on my, my, a little bit on my side of my face, and all down the front of my shirt, all down like, like from the shoulder down to here. That pretty much did it for me. The heat, the crowds, you know, all of that, kind of uncomfortable. And then the bird taking a dump on my shoulder. That that was that was it. So uh, I can see the humor in it now. Kind of wish I'd have had the camera going, but I wasn't all that happy. Uh, it's kind of embarrassing to be quite honest. 
so I cleaned up with what I what I had as far as napkins, and then I went to the bathroom up behind the um, kind of that turn that corner, like you're heading towards the Imagination Pavilion, and uh, the Starbucks sits there on the corner, or it did sit on the corner. I think they moved it. And so I went to the bathroom, kind of washed washed my shirt the best I could. This is a thin shirt anyway, try to keep cool, you know. So, uh, of course, it cleaned. It, it's cleaned up several days later. It's, you know, been washed and whatnot. But, but uh, anyhow, that brought things to a halt. Uh, didn't do any more filming. So here we are. It's kind of a lame video. I uh, hope to get back again sometime soon. Um, not sure when that'll be, but uh, stay tuned, I guess. And we'll get back when we get back, and maybe we'll take another video. In the meantime, there were a couple of things maybe we'll try to get on the next video, or the new Magic Bands, or Magic Band Plus. They're a little bit bigger. They they have kind of an interactive feature to them. Uh, they could do things. It seems like uh, Hollywood Studios and and uh, Galaxy's Edge have a kind of a, 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 a bounty hunter type scavenger hunt thing. Sounds pretty cool. I don't know. Uses a lot of battery power in the in the wristband and in your phone because it has to work with the Bluetooth back and forth. Uh, so maybe we'll check that out at some point. Uh, it also has the interactive 50th statues. They they interact with that. These ba magic bands, of course, they gradually get more and more expensive with the more features that they have. Kind of makes me wonder, like, what's the value in that magic band outside of you know some bounty hunter scavenger hunt deals and the uh, uh, okay, you walk up to a 50th statue and you you're supposed to wave your arm around and then it plays music. I don't think they really have any other interactive features. I thought to myself, what's the value in that? I saw some people that had them the day that I was there that got pooped on. And, you know, you, these people walk up to these statues and they start waving their arm in front of the statue to try to get it to, to do whatever the statue does, play whatever music. And I thought, well, <laughs> there's the comedic value. I guess that's... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. So I guess that'll be me. Once I get my, I've got the magic band, I just have to get into the park and try it. So I guess I'll be one of the ones waving my arm like an idiot in front of these stands, in in front of these uh, 50th statues. So and there's a couple of new features on the app. One of them is to help you find your car in a parking lot, which comes in handy. Magic Kingdom parking lot and Epcot parking lot, I'm pretty good with. I park. I don't have to pay a whole lot of attention usually to where I park. Hollywood Studios, for some reason, that parking lot messes me up. I don't know why. I've had issues there losing my cars. But uh, anyway, I, I intend on testing that out too. I meant to test it out on this video, but I forgot about it. And then I got pooped on and kind of ruined my day, so I didn't really get a chance to go back and look at it. So anyway, next trip over, we'll, we'll try to answer some of these questions and see what things look like, and uh, we'll go from there. So anyway, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, hit the thumbs up. That helps out a lot. And we will see you all in the next video. Until next time, take care.